Hey guys, what's good? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm finally, finally, finally getting around to doing my chit chat, get ready with me, answering you guys' questions. Shout out to everybody who left their questions, you know, on the little post that I made on my YouTube page. So yeah, we're just gonna hop right into it. But if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below so you know every time I post a video. Okay, so the first question actually got a lot of likes on it. So I'm gonna answer this question. It says, I've always heard of certain rumors about Canada that I would love for you to elaborate on, such as, is Canada an, inex an inexpensive place to live? Is the healthcare in Canada really bomb? And do people really get to go to college for free? Is it inexpensive to live in Canada? No, it's actually pretty expensive to live here when it comes to the cost of living, buying houses, all of that, real estate, food, transportation, everything is super expensive. And I guess because it is a big city, like Toronto is just that city in Canada, you know, you know like everybody knows Toronto. Like $800,000 in Toronto, it'll get you a house and everything, but you won't get the upgrades that you want or any of that, especially depending on where it is. Um, good luck with that. And for rent in Toronto, you will probably get like a one bedroom. This is probably like downtown Toronto for like 1800. And then the one bedrooms are super small. They're like 500 square feet, 600 square feet. It's, you don't get a lot for your money. Our minimum wage actually just went up though. I think it's now $14. Correct me if I'm wrong. Obviously once the minimum wage goes up, so does the cost of living. So really, what's the point of that? <laughs> make it seem like you're making a little bit more money but it doesn't really add up in regards to the healthcare in Canada yes it is super super bomb like I love the healthcare in Canada pretty much you know everything is free you know if I break my leg today I'm going to the hospital I'm getting that fixed and I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna get a large bill in the mail saying you know you gotta pay this much, I'm good. But that goes hand in hand with our taxes. We have really high taxes and that's because of our healthcare, but at the end of the day, we're winning because even though they take a lot of ta taxes out, who the hell wants to get billed like $50,000 for like breaking, some, breaking a bone or something? Like I could be over exaggerating. I don't know how it is in the States, but I've heard like stories like that where people can get billed like $50,000 and things like that. To me, that is really, really crazy. And also I heard that people in the States get billed for having a child. I think that's crazy as well. Like that doesn't happen to us at all. I can't imagine that. I know there's insurance and everything like that, but how much does it really cover? But yes, our healthcare is bomb. We do have to pay for like certain dental procedures. Like I had to pay for my braces, obviously. Um, I had to pay to get out my wisdom teeth, but usually if your parents have like insurance or something like that, or if you have insurance, you can get it done for free, minus the braces. Usually they'll like cut down the cost, but it depends on what your insurance covers. And as far as people going to school for free, I think that's a new thing. I'm not even sure if it's still happening right now, but when I went to school, I had to pay. When my sister went to school, she had to pay. So I think that that's like a recent thing. But I was just like, damn, like why couldn't this happen when I was in college or in university? So yeah, I do have student loan. It's not a lot though. Okay, so the next question is, what did you go to school for? Do you ever plan on utilizing your degree or diploma? So I went to school for social work. Um, I forgot to do my eyebrows. I'll do that after. But yeah, um, no, I don't think I plan to use my degree or my diploma because social work is just not what I want to do anymore. I did like it in the beginning, but I think like a year into it, I'm just like, I can't see myself doing this forever and being happy. Um, I, like growing up, I've always been into like volunteering and you know, but I used to volunteer in my community and all of that. And I thought, oh my gosh, like social work or youth working is like the best, best job. I think I would really like it. And I realized that it's not what I wanna do because I can't really be creative in that job. And I feel like I'm a creative person and uh, yeah, it just wouldn't be for me. By all means, at least I have a degree and if I really, have to you know go back into work or something I'll have that to you know fall back on 
but I just can't see myself doing that forever. All right, so next question is, what was my job before YouTube? So my job, I pretty much only had one like real, real job. Like I said, I used to volunteer in my community. I used to run basketball program. I used to do girls club and stuff like that and I used to get paid for it. But my, like, my first like real, real, real job was working at like a fast food restaurant. Well, it wasn't necessarily a fast food restaurant. It was, it was for special events. It was pizza, pizza, special events. If you're in Toronto, you know what pizza, pizza is, but it's pretty much like a Papa John's, but it was for a special event. So it wasn't at a certain location. It could be at like a fair. It could be a concert. It was at basketball games. I think I had that job when I graduated high school and, t and then until I finished university. So I had it like my four years. And then after that, I went to do YouTube full time. And did I like that job? I actually didn't mind that job in the very, very beginning. The people that I work with, they were mad cool. But overall, it was actually a pretty cool job. I liked making the pizzas. I liked doing cashier. So, hmm. But they ended up firing me because I couldn't go into work one day and it was like really last minute because something happened to my mom and Aaliyah was literally just a little baby. My mom couldn't walk or anything like that. And I'm like, I'm sorry, like I can't come in. And they're like, well, you're gonna get fired. I'm like, well, fire me. So this question got a lot of likes as well. And the question is, what is your religion? So I wouldn't necessarily say I have a religion. Um, I, I would say this is history. Um, I'm not gonna go into it too much because I really don't like discussing this stuff on my channel just because I don't like getting into it with people. People like to hide behind a screen and talk the most crap ever. So pretty much I am a Hebrew Israelite. I spoke about this on my channel a lot in the past so if you are like a longtime follower of mine you guys would know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I highly suggest if you're interested in like learning more, um, definitely Google it. Comment down below if you're a Hebrew Israelite and you're woke. Next question is, if I could have a job different from YouTubing, what would it be? And how demanding is YouTube if you are a YouTuber who is recognized by brands that are big like Diva Curl and Shea Moisture, just to name a few. So honestly, if I wasn't doing YouTube and I never really ever got into YouTube, I would probably be miserable doing social work and that's just me being honest. But if I was to like quit YouTube and you know, do something else with my life, I would definitely get into something where I can be a little bit more creative, like photography, videography. I would love to do like baby photos, wedding photos, wedding videography. Like that's what I would really be into. Maybe even digital marketing or I don't know, like brand management or something like that. I think that would be super fun and more up my alley. And as far as YouTube being demanding, yes, it is super, super demanding. I feel like in this industry or in this world, influencer world, you have to always stay relevant, which is super annoying, but you know, that's what comes with it. Um, you gotta always be posting on social media everybody has to be knowing what you're up to what you're doing snapchat instagram twitter um youtube vlogging just everything and like if you don't keep up with all those things people are gonna forget about you and then you're not gonna make your coin um and that's why you see that people who are the most consistent are usually the people who are most successful have the most followers because people want to keep up with their lives and then in terms of working with like big brands and everything like that yeah it can it can be a lot because there can be so many brands who contact you just in a week time frame and then to be on point with the videos, deadlines contracts there's outlines there's just a whole bunch that goes into it so yeah, it is pretty, pretty demanding. So you're constantly filming, editing, filming, editing, and it literally never stops because filming takes a lot of time. Editing takes even more time, so it's a lot. Somebody asked me, what is my hair goal? Am I trying to grow my hair out all the way to my booty? Or am I just enjoying my natural hair journey? And I think I'm just enjoying my natural hair journey. I don't necessarily have a goal. I honestly can't even see myself with tailbone, tailbone length hair, even though my extensions right now are actually down to my booty. So I don't know. I just can't see myself growing my hair that long. 
I actually am itching to cut it again because I love how my curls look when I cut it. It just looks so bomb. Okay, so another popular question is when am I moving to Texas? And I have no idea when I'm going to move to Texas. Um, if I'm going to move to Texas. No, I'm playing. Moving to Texas is definitely you know been talked about not because i necessarily want to want to like i personally rather stay in toronto just because i don't want to give up that health care and i just love toronto in general so if you guys follow me you guys know that my boyfriend does live in texas and when i move there it'll probably be when we both make that commitment to each other and you know we're engaged and going to get married or whatever that's the only way that i'll be moving to texas you know, if that doesn't happen, then my ass is staying here in Toronto and I'll be A-OK. -okay. But like, I would not just pick up and leave to move to Texas um, as just a girlfriend and just for my own personal self, like, nah, Toronto's good for me. The next question is, any advice on saving money while you're young but still having fun? So I'm a big saver, like I like to save, but I also do like to spend. Where I spend my the most money is on traveling and it's also on electronics and sometimes clothes, but mm, that's up in the air. So my number one tip on saving money while you're young is to live with your parents. That's just my number one yeah, my number one thing, like I feel like there's nothing wrong with living it with your parents, especially if they want you to live with them or they don't care if you do. I know a lot of people are doing it for the culture now and moving out like super, super young at 18 and everything. And then, you know, just end up in a lot of debt, um, are renting for like the rest of their lives and all of that. I feel like if you want to have the most fun in your 20s, this is just my opinion, is to just live at home because especially if you want to travel and everything that's the best option you don't you don't even have to stay at home just continue traveling each country come back home for you know a few weeks recharge reboot and head out to, and go somewhere else again um i feel like once you live on your own it's kind of harder to do that because you have so many bills you're gonna have your phone bill you're gonna have your rent you're gonna have all these other just things adding up and you're not going to be able to do the things that you really really want to do you know you might you might have to make sacrifice living at home which is what i'm doing i make sacrifice like i'm not necessarily all the way happy i might not necessarily have everything that i want to but my time is coming don't worry about it but at the moment i am living like i literally am home six months out of the year and I had so much fun. Yeah, and my mom doesn't really care if I leave or not. So that's honestly my number one thing. You can live at home, just do it. Just sacrifice and do it. Another tip is to write all your income coming in and to you know write everything out that you're buying. I feel like a lot of young people, they spend their most the most money on food. I feel like I can relate to that too. Um, food is just life. But you know, if you can cook a meal at home, do that because that's going to save you a lot of money and then try to cancel out the things that you don't necessarily need okay so the next question somebody asks is would you recommend living in austin as a single black woman if you want to meet single black men honestly i would say no because for me being there the times that i'm there i really don't see a lot of black people like it's very rare maybe it's the area that i'm in i could be wrong but majority i majority of people that i see are not black the most black people i ever seen was at south by southwest and i was just like i didn't know i didn't know this could happen in austin <laughs> that's just me being for real but i did read an article my boyfriend actually posted an article saying that for black men austin is like the place to go i think they're like number four or rank number four and number three i'm like places where like black professional young men you know are finding jobs and everything like that so you know if you're looking for a professional honey um maybe austin is the place to go don't necessarily know where you're gonna find them where they at but you know might as well give it a shot just come visit and scope it out so next question how do you feel you have grown mentally and emotionally since your last relationship do you like the changes that have come your way 
what would you say is the hardest obstacle you had to overcome in order to get to where you are right now and do the same friends you've had five years ago still support you in your walk with life i feel like i've grown a lot in that aspect because i used to be very very timid in my relationships i didn't really speak up for myself i used to take bullshit i was very naive all of that and it's crazy that you just don't even realize it until you're out of the relationship it's so crazy how love is just so freaking blind like eve song love is blind that that is just real um, yeah i used to be in a very 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 um bad relationship i don't really like to talk about it i don't really get into it i don't think i've ever addressed it on my channel but if you guys can think of really bad relationship like one of the worst of the worst type of relationships you guys can probably guess where i'm going with that um so yeah i was in that for a really long time and i feel like it really teared me down as a person and i became super super weak i feel like it really disconnected me from a lot of people like my friends and my family especially because i didn't really want anyone to know what was going on in my life so yeah i feel like it hindered a lot of my relationships and yeah it really just brought me down as a person so now i feel like i know myself better and i know my deal breakers and i know and I really stand up for myself. If I don't like something, I'm gonna address it. So I just feel like as a person, I'm just mentally stronger. It's a really hard thing to explain. I feel like that's something that I really would have to think about and then, you know, talk about. And yes, literally all the friends that I have now, are I've known them for over five years and they still support me and I support them. And that is what you call a true friend. And I believe that we are always going to be friends. We're never not gonna be friends. Like that's how legit our relationship is. Someone asked me, on average, how much do you save for a trip, including plane tickets, hotel, food, and spending money? And is it hard to convert money for from different countries or for different countries? So how much you save for a trip honestly depends on where you're going, who you're going with, all of that. So I'm just gonna give you guys some examples. So when I went to Cuba, I went with, I think it was about nine girls and everybody had a certain budget and that budget was under a thousand dollars so we ended up going to a all-inclusive resort for eight hundred dollars which was an amazing price it wasn't the most luxurious hotel it wasn't the most amazing hotel but it was a hotel that we can tolerate it had no bed bugs the food was pretty good um yeah it just wasn't the best looking so yeah we all went to cuba for eight hundred dollars and all-inclusive meaning that we got alcohol free food was free the accommodation was free um, not free well, it was included in that price the only things that we really had to pay for was if we were getting outside food or if we were doing an excursion or something like that yeah literally i would say overall we probably paid or spent about a thousand dollars so another example would be was when i went to jamaica with my girls in august we ended up paying i think it was like thirteen hundred dollars for another all-inclusive to jamaica and the hotel wasn't bad at all it was a pretty big hotel and it was all inclusive like i said and yeah drinks free food free accommodations free flight included all of that for thirteen hundred dollars a more expensive trip would be is when i went to europe with my girls we ended up going to barcelona italy amalfi coast and we also went to london and i feel like that was our first like really really like big international trip where we went to like three different countries um some were kind of far um so we planned it ourselves we never used a travel what is it like a travel guide what do you call those people you know what i'm talking about um yeah we did that all ourselves and we probably spent about five thousand dollars total five thousand dollars canadian and that's for the transfers between different countries, the, the flight, the, lo the lodging, like the hotels, spending money, um, all of that stuff. And because we are from Canada, our dollar sucks compared to the euro and compared to the pound. So it just added up a lot more. And we weren't trying to be like 
you know, frugal on that trip. If we wanted to do something, we were gonna do it. As for changing currencies, it's pretty easy. At my bank, they actually do it for you. So you should check if your bank does it for you. You know, if they would do it for you, pretty much you just go there and be like, I'm going to so-and-so. I would like this amount of money. And usually if it's like, I don't know, and not such a popular destination they'll have to order it for you and it'll take like a few business days and even when you go to the destination there are ways where you can you know convert your money there's usually like currency exchanges at the airport which i wouldn't do because usually they rip you off um even at the hotels they also do it and the hotel rate is usually actually better than the rate they do they give you at the airport so yeah it's not it's not a hard thing to do it's pretty easy Look at that highlight though, guys. Honestly, it's my Ray Ray. What color is this again? French toast. It's so lit. Ugh. Mm. Girl, can't tell me nothing. So guys, I cannot talk and put on my eyelashes, nor can I talk and do my eyeliner. So I'm gonna hop off this and I'm gonna be back. I think this is gonna be the last question since I'm pretty much done. So any tips for LDRs, how to not let the feeling of loneliness consume you as you wait to see them again. I'd be lying if I said that I don't feel lonely sometimes and sometimes I do let it consume me. Um, especially when you see you know, other couples together and things like that and just being away from somebody for a long period of time is just super, super hard. So honestly the best you know, cure to that is just to stay busy keep yourself busy I feel like a lot of times because I do work from home it's kind of hard to do that but what makes it easier is having two people who you know are gonna make the conscious effort to you know stay in touch throughout the day you know if it's to FaceTime you know all those things help but it cannot be one-sided everybody's gonna have to want it both parties are gonna have to be you know putting in that work I feel like what makes it easier for me is that I can literally see him whenever I want to just because the flexibility of my job and I literally see him like two months at a time so that you know it's not as bad like I'm okay but honestly sometimes when it's during that time of the month I'm just like I miss my baby I miss him because I'm like all emotional and stuff. So yeah, my thing is long distance relationships aren't for everyone. You're gonna have to learn how to cope, how to deal, um, how to communicate, all of that. And if you know, you're know you the type of person that needs that person like right there in front of you so you can just go out and see them and all of that, then an LDR is not gonna work for you. It really isn't. All right, y'all, so I am pretty much done. I'm just gonna spray my face with the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray, even though it is 1.46 a.m. And ask me where I'm going. <laughs> I'm going nowhere, I'm staying my ass at home. I'm just filming a video. So yeah, y'all, this is pretty much the final look literally my everyday routine as i always do you guys know this i keep it super simple this is not even an everyday routine this is like when i wanna this is when i'm going out and i'm actually trying to look you know good have my makeup on fleek and all that this is like i'm trying face yeah highlights popping and everything but yeah um hopefully you guys enjoyed this chit chat get ready with me asking you guys questions i did get a lot of questions about travel which i didn't really get to address in this q a because i think i'm gonna do a travel series on my channel and i've been loafing on this just because i feel like i'm not equipped enough to you know give you guys the information but i'm just gonna share with you guys my knowledge and what i know and you guys can take it from there because i get so many questions every single day and maybe Maybe my tips will help you maybe they won't but I'm gonna just do what I do and hopefully you guys enjoy that content and let me know what kind of travel videos you would want to see from me and yeah like I said the links to everything that I use will be down below hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys all in the next video I love y'all deuces